Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Age of Empires 4 unit counters and dig into the specific bonuses that are going on behind the scenes to create them. Now, this is a little tricky without a scenario editor, which the game is lacking at launch. If anything ends up being wrong or more information comes out, I'll leave a comment with any corrections pinned below. But it's fair to say at least some conclusions can be made based on information available. Now there is an official counters chart that's circulating on the forums, which for the most part I agree with, though I think it's missing some important context and lots of units aren't included, which we'll look at in this video. But first, I think it's worth knowing how bonus damage actually works in Age of Empires 4. One way that many games create a counter system is by using attack multipliers. Age of Empires 3 did bonus damage with multipliers for example, and this is common in many games, where one type of unit might take double its normal damage from one of its counters. That's not the only way to do it though, and Age of Empires 2 for example took a different route and instead of multiplying it adds a special type of damage that can't be blocked by armor. For example, a pikeman's regular melee attack can be reduced by a knight's armor and upgrades, but the pikeman has 22 hidden bonus damage that can't be stopped. In Age of Empires 4, bonus damage is almost a hybrid of these two systems. Technically, the bonuses are additive, like in AoE 2, but the numbers they picked are in most cases very suggestive of multipliers. For example, looking at the fundamental counters triangle in Feudal Age, we have Spearmen, Archers, and Horsemen. You can see their base attack here, and then the extra bonus damage that's applied against the next unit in the triangle. You can see Archers and Horsemen essentially get double their attack once you add in their bonus, and the Spearman actually triples its base attack. To keep the number of numbers on the screen to a minimum, I'll summarize bonuses then as multiples. Archers do 5 base damage in Feudal Age, but gain 5 more against Spears, so as a shorthand, we'll say they have double their usual attack. Even if on a certain level multiplying isn't technically what's going on, I think it's a more intuitive way to think of it, and makes things a lot less cluttered. Also, to make things more clear, I'll be talking both about hard counters, which means there's some major bonus damage involved, and soft counters, where one unit has an advantage, but the game isn't forcing it quite as much. So with that, we'll start off with the barracks units, where you'll notice the big thread is going to be that they hard counter cavalry, assuming the cavalry doesn't just run away, while infantry are countered themselves by ranged units. Beginning with spearmen, they have plus 12 versus cavalry in Dark Age, though that scales with every upgrade to keep pace with their rise in attack and maintain the same ratio. The way it works out, as mentioned already, is you're functionally getting triple their usual attack against cavalry. Their stats are quite weak though, with less attack, HP, and armor than the men at arms. Archers, on the other hand, are the hard counter, with double their usual attack. Note that crossbows don't have bonus damage against spears, but the fact they attack from range means they can be a decent counter, as long as they're protected. Theoretically, cavalry archers could also hit and run against spears, and area of effect siege, like mangonels and nest of bees, can be effective as well, which is true against really any infantry. Essentially, spearmen are just one-trick ponies, or should we say one-trick anti-ponies. Contrast that with the men-at-arms, which I'll group with the Chinese palace guards as a unique variation. Neither have any bonus damage listed, and are heavily armored general-purpose melee units. Since they're considered heavy melee infantry, they're countered quite well by crossbows, which have high enough attack to get through their armor, as well as a roughly 50% attack bonus. You might think that archers are a good counter here as well, as they are in Age of Empires 2, but in AoE 4, men-at-arms have quite a bit of armor, and hold up fairly well to archers. The official guide actually says men-at-arms slightly counter archers, which I do agree with based on my experience. For a bit of context, a Castle Age crossbowman does 14 damage to a men-at-arms per shot, whereas a Castle Age archer does 3, assuming everyone has the same level of upgrades. To me, this really highlights the importance of picking the right unit. Now, for the Holy Roman Empire's Lands Connect, it may be a bit counterintuitive as it looks pretty tough, but it's actually a light melee infantry with relatively low HP. That means archers have a bonus against them, and are a better choice than crossbows. The Lance Connect's main selling feature is of course their high attack and area of effect, so they're good against bunched up melee units, including spearmen and men at arms. So that's infantry, but we're just getting started. Now let's move on and talk about the archery range. Starting with the archer, essentially in the early game their counter is the horseman, which does roughly double damage against any ranged unit. This also applies to the Chinese Fire Lancer, as it's a very similar unit, and essentially just a unique variant of the Horseman. The Camel Rider is also in the same light melee cavalry class, but doesn't have a bonus against archers, so it's much less effective. It also doesn't have any armor, and is quite expensive, so in some cases archers may even be a soft counter to camels. Because of their low attack, archers also do quite poorly against armored units, making things like knights and men-at-arms a pretty serious threat. 
Their other major counter is the mangonel or nest of bees, as they can damage a large area. Something I've seen mentioned and agree with is the archer in Age Vampires 4 is a lot like the skirmisher in Age 2, and it's primarily a cheap filler unit or answer to spearmen. For longbowmen, their palings make them a bit tougher against horsemen, and some people have argued this means longbows don't have an early game counter. Without a working scenario editor, I have to go off what I've seen firsthand, and my sense is that the palings are directional and also take some time to deploy, so I think cavalry do still have a chance against longbows. You just have to maneuver a bit more, and make use of the fact that the longbow's abilities have a cooldown every time they move. A really interesting comparison happens though when we switch now to crossbows. Their bonus damage, as mentioned already, is against heavy units, so knights, lancers, men-at-arms, etc. That said, they don't fight very well up close, so we need the caveat that even against those units, they'll need some kind of melee shield in front to be effective. Their counters are again horsemen, which do double damage, along with the area of effect units, like mangonels and nest of bees. Now, I initially expected archers would be a hard counter to crossbows, and the official AOE4 chart claims it's a great matchup for archers. In this case, I'm not sure I agree with the very enthusiastic triple plus signs. The two units have the same range in HP, and the crossbow has higher damage output, though it is significantly more expensive. I double checked and archers definitely don't do any bonus damage against crossbows, so it's more of a soft counter value play in favor of the archer rather than a hard counter in my opinion. The Arbalétrier for French though really shakes things up. They have the same bonus against heavy units as regular crossbows, but start with a bit of melee armor and can also have that improved by plus 5 with unique tech, as well as deploy epiphies to increase their ranged armor. In this case, their counter is still light cavalry and area of effect siege, but in addition to the usual crossbow specialties, they should do much better against archers by almost negating their attack entirely. Another unique variation is the Chinese Chukunu. They kind of look like they're holding crossbows, but in fact they don't have bonus damage against armored units like the crossbow does. They're much better thought of as a rapid firing archer, so best used against unarmored units and weak to heavy units with high armor. Again, area of effect siege like mangonels are also going to be good against them. Looking now at the hand cannoneer, Age of Empires 2 players may expect them to have a bonus damage against infantry, but according to its stats, it has no bonus damage to speak of at all. It's just a very high attack unit, with around triple the base attack of the crossbowmen, albeit with a bit shorter range. They're a little slow and take bonus damage from horsemen, so that's theoretically a good counter, depending on numbers. They're described by the game as powerful all-purpose ranged infantry, so I would think of them like that, and just make sure you have spearmen or something to hold off melee units in front. The Roost Streltsy are very similar, but cheaper, have some ranged armor, and even gain more damage output when they're standing still for more than 5 seconds. As for the Grenadier, they're expensive and have relatively low attack, but can damage all the units in a small area. As far as I know at this point, there's no friendly fire in Age of Empires 4 at all for any unit, so feel free to use them indiscriminately even if you have a lot of soldiers nearby. Keep in mind, like all ranged units, they do take bonus damage from horsemen, and even knights can be a pretty serious threat. Moving on to the horse archer, again there's no explicit bonus damage, but using hit and run potentially lets them counter infantry. Of course, they take bonus damage and also move more slowly than horsemen, so we can throw them in as the best counter, though knights are also decent thanks to high armor. The game description says horse archers are weak to ranged units, and while it's true that ranged units are able to fight back, horse archers have a similar cost, HP, damage per second, and range to crossbows, while also not costing gold. So it seems like a stretch to say all ranged units are a good counter, but I can see where they're going with that, and archers probably trade effectively. Now Mangadai are an interesting variation, as they can fire while moving. Horsemen are a little faster, and of course have their bonus damage, and knights can also scare them off. Mangadai are similar to horse archers, in that they're good against infantry, and arguably are fine against any melee unit besides horsemen. For yet another variation of a mounted archer, this time with a bit of a twist, we have the camel archer. They cause nearby cavalry to lose 20% of their attack, while also doing effectively triple damage against spearmen. They still take bonus damage from spears and horsemen, and also keep in mind that camel archers are a very expensive unit with poor damage against armor. Their high cost means that even archers, for example, can be a good cost-effective counter. And finally, we have the Tower Elephant. This is a ranged cavalry unit, so it takes extra damage from both horsemen and spears. Their archers or crossbows on top can protect against a small number though, so make sure you aren't trickling units into them. This is the first case where I think Bombards could be a good choice, given they do very high damage to an individual target. 
Their high HP and ability to fire back means I think tower elephants are also a fairly good counter to ranged units in general, and they even have a bit of pierce armor. But now let's move on to the stable, where the big counters we'll see over and over are the spearmen and camels. Looking first at scouts, they have pretty weak stats across the board. Unlike horsemen, they're not particularly good against archers, and their only bonus damage is against other scouts. Spearmen are one defensive option to protect from Roost Scout raids, but horsemen are also slightly faster with much better stats, so end up doing a good job to help hold on to map control. But speaking of horsemen, they're weak against spearmen and camel riders as their hard counters, but as light melee units they'll also perform poorly against heavy units in general like the knight or men at arms. As we've seen many times already, their specialty is against anything ranged, and because of their speed they're also quite good at picking off villagers as well. Basically all of this applies to the Chinese Fire Lancer as well, as the units are quite similar with their having a bit of extra area of effect damage and a better bonus against buildings. As for Knights and Lancers, which are the exact same unit, as mentioned already, they can be a soft counter to archers and horsemen because of their high armor, but take bonus damage from spearmen, camels, and crossbows. Against heavy infantry like man-at-arms, I think knights generally come out a bit better if you're using charges and mobility, but there's potentially a cost-efficiency argument in favor of heavy infantry if you focus on gold, so it is a bit debatable. For what it's worth, the official chart shows knights are a slight counter to man-at-arms, which I think is fair to say. For the Abbasid camel riders, they're similarly countered by spearmen, and even mass ranged units can be effective, given the camel's lack of armor or bonuses against them. Camel riders almost completely specialize against cavalry by reducing cavalry's attack and simultaneously doing triple their usual damage against them. And finally, for the Delhi War Elephant, since it's mounted by a spearman, you probably won't be surprised to learn they have a large bonus against cavalry. They're not as good as the Tower War Elephant against archers, in my opinion, given they can't fire back, and it also opens them up a bit more to the risk of a conversion. Also note that they do take bonus damage from crossbows, unlike Tower War Elephants, so in this case that might also be a reasonable counter. Fundamentally, I'd call the War Elephant more of an anti-building unit than anything else though, and it can even attack stone walls, which is a handy ability. Wrapping up with the Siege units, the most general counter is Cavalry, though in many cases infantry can be good as well, if they get close. All Siege have armor against ranged attacks, but take torch damage from melee units, which is often higher than a unit's regular attack. In a way, it's as if melee units have a bit of bonus damage against Siege, while every ranged unit does reduce damage. The Springhold, Bombard, and especially the Abbasid in Holy Roman Empire's Culverin could also be considered a counter against other Siege units, as they're good at sniping high-value targets from range. As I've mentioned already, area of effect siege like the Mangonel, Rebaldakin, and Nest of Bees are also particularly good against bunched up units, whether that be infantry, archers, or crossbows, though they need to be defended with a meat shield in front, and to watch out for springholds. So those are the basic land unit counters in Age of Empires 4, and what's going on behind the scenes to make them happen. Of course, keep in mind counters don't exist in a vacuum, and you always want to be conscious of using multiple types of units to protect against each other's weaknesses. Knights and archers, for example, are a classic pairing that almost entirely cover each other's counters. In many cases, you're best off trying to combine a melee, ranged, and siege unit of some type to make up your late game army composition, and hopefully some ideas in this video will come in handy for making the specific unit selections. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.